welcome back. If you've watched the last episode, you're beginning to understand that this roof system is kind of a grab bag of different procedures in different parts of the building. We can't just start on one end and take one process all the way across the house, and so it's going to require you to kind of keep track of what we've got going on. The good news is, what you're going to get a look at today is something that I have been anxious to start in on, and that is to extend the overhangs at the side wall of the house to echo what we established on the gable ends of the house when we raised those walls up just a few days ago. So hang tight, you're going to see a big transition from the engineered wood products that we've been using in the rafters and in the roof sheathing to good old fashioned Douglas fir free of heart center beams on these overhangs. Now the first thing that's really new here and that perhaps you're seeing right now for the first time is another LVL. Think of it as a really narrow beam and it's defining the juncture between the main roof slope and the side of the shed dormer. Now you're going to get a good look at this later on so don't stress if it doesn't make perfect sense right now. This beautiful piece of lumber is our rafter tail. We're going to install these things all around the perimeter of the house, about four foot on center, or every other rafter, more or less. They are glued, clamped, and nailed directly to the side of the BCI rafters, and they bear down directly on top of our shear blocks in order to cantilever out into space. I'll be referring to these rafter tails as false tails, and it's easy enough to see why. When the house is done, it's going to look like the entire roof system is made out of these nice 3x8 beams. But you and I know that's not the case. These beams are Douglas fir number one, free of heart center, and are a finished surface on the exterior of this house, exactly like the corbels. They will be 100% visible once the house is complete. And so we are being very careful to put the best ends out, the best edges down and to make sure that the plum cuts are perfectly lined up with one another. The next thing is to build and install the bird blocks. These will go in between all of the false tails and create an opening so that the air between the roof sheathing and the insulation can escape through roof vents near the peak of the roof. These bird blocks also provide a place to do something that is called boundary nailing. That is making sure the entire perimeter of the roof diaphragm is nailed off on the specified nailing pattern. We're going to be making enough of these bird blocks that we went ahead and brought a drill press from the shop to the site and made a little jig to assist with the drilling. These holes that we're starting with are two and three eighths of an inch in diameter, which is really a big, a big hole to push through a board. Yes, you could get this with a handheld drill, but it would not be fun and it would not be precise. Since all these blocks will be visible and all in a line next to each other all the way around the house, they need to be exact duplicates clones, really. But exact clones only in a rough framing sort of way. In other words, I'm not doing finished carpentry here. Very close is close enough.
tacking this tar paper behind the bird blocks, just on the off chance that a person would be able to see up through the vent and recognize the OSB. Now I don't think this is going to be possible once the roof is on, but just to be certain, I'm putting a little barrier in there. Think of it like black paint that is instantly dry to the touch. And it will also help, just in case for some reason, some water squirts up here, like if a kid gets carried away with a hose or something like that. These vents are probably a bit bigger than they actually need to be to vent properly, but I didn't want to take a chance. We live in a wet environment around here, and mold can be a real problem. If an attic isn't venting properly, moisture will generate in the attic from condensation, creating an environment for the mold spores that are in the air everywhere to set up housekeeping. And as the mold thrives and spreads like crazy, it damages and weakens all the wood products it attaches to, and it can be difficult to get rid of. More importantly, it can be a real health concern. Some people react poorly to mold spores. Now, maybe not everybody, but it's just not worth taking a chance, is it? So we've got these mondo size vents going in around the entire perimeter, and this attic is gonna breathe and vent like crazy. Vents like this are not the most attractive feature on any house, but they're gonna be tucked well up underneath a long overhang, under the eaves, so they won't stand out or be noticeable from the curb. You can see right here how the wall sheathing lays over the top of these shear blocks and ties the roof to the second floor deck and our rim board clear down to the first floor and secures everything together. Remember those screws that we ran through the rafters? They were great and they did their job, but this OSB is what is actually holding the roof on the house. Now that the rafter tails and bird blocks are all in place, we cover the overhang with more tongue and groove decking, running the same direction as the tongue and groove decking on our gable ends. Again, you're going to watch us do this all the way around this house, and what you're watching here is our test run, so to speak. And let me just say right now that it went pretty darn well. And after all, if thou blowest not thine own horn, the same shall not be tooted. Now these overhangs and the way we're doing them are really kind of a big deal and added a tremendous amount of time, material, and cost to this project. Hopefully, once the house is roofed, sided, and painted, we'll be able to look up at it and feel like it was worth all this extra effort. So here's what I would like to make sure that you know, and that is this, when this house is done, when the key is in the front door, when the heat's on on the inside, when the grass is planted and everything is turnkey, it is going to be sold. 
But we have no idea to who, we have no idea for how much, the market's going to determine that. But here's what I can tell you is that we will have an open house. I don't know if it's going to be one weekend or two weekends. I don't know if it's going to be a month apart. We don't know, but we'll let you know. And the takeaway is this, we appreciate you watching this process and I can't wait to meet you if it's possible for you to swing by and have a look at this house when we finally put a bow on it and a ribbon on the top. It would be great if you could stop by and say howdy. In the meantime, thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up that good work.